Welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm a transformation coach. I'm a spiritual energy healer. I'm a shamanic practitioner. And I'm the spiritual head of the Transformation Center CT, which is located in Westport, Connecticut. So at the center, we do a variety of things. We have workshops, classes, trainings. Um, we do individual coaching sessions and healing sessions. And now we are doing them in person, um, but we still do a lot of stuff on Zoom. We can also do anything that we do in person, we can also do remotely. So it works really well either way. Um, we have regular events here and just check the website. I'm gonna put up our contact info so you can visit that and you can find out what's going on at any given moment because when you're watching this, it may not be the middle of the summer in Connecticut as it is here. So it's the transformationcenterct.com and there's our email address and phone number. Just um, visit us any, any time that you're available. Okay. So, you know, the Spiritual Connection Show is all about connection, which if you've seen it before, you will know that that's one of my core values. I just love meeting new people, connecting with them energetically, spiritually, you know, any other way. We've been recording on Zoom for a while now, and I think it's working pretty well, you know, considering the limitations. Um, but anyway, you know, connect also with your own spiritual self and the connection that you'll feel with all of my guests. I have a different guest every week, as you know. I'm so excited today to welcome Uma Bodhi as my guest. Welcome to the show, Uma. Thank you, Katie. It's so nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to see you. So I'm going to introduce you and put up your slide so people can see your contact info. Okay, so here we go. So Uma Bodhi, who I've known for a few years now, and she's just one of my favorite people in the whole universe, and her company is actually called Umaverse, as you will see. I love that. And Uma has a gift for facilitating personal transformation and inner spiritual growth in anyone who seeks it. You know, I love her vision. Her vision is a world where all people boldly and fearlessly live their most authentic life. And Uma trains women to claim their power and live the life they long for by providing life-changing coaching, different programs, and community through her company, the Umaverse. So this is her website. You can find anything there, her contact info. You can reach her, her website, schedule, um, you know, appointments, anything you want. So again, welcome to the show, Uma. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Like I said, Katie, what a beautiful intro. <laughs> <laughs> For a beautiful soul. Thank you. Glad to get to know you. This is going to be fun. So, you know, the first uh, question I always ask my guest is, you know, tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey. Anything you want to share? No. Oh. So that's such a... It's a perfect question for me because my whole life has been my spiritual journey. It's, I always was super curious about God from a pretty young age and I wasn't brought up religious at all. We were Unitarian, which if anybody knows about Unitarianism, it's kind of like, I mean, they consider themselves Christian, but it's pretty wide open. And I can remember asking my parents, do you believe in God and what do you think God is? And having these conversations with my mom, who's a brought up Catholic and my dad, who was a secular Jew. And, and it was pretty fascinating. I just grew into it. I, I actually went to college to study comparative religions at Stony Brook on Long Island, New York. And I quickly started not going to class because it wasn't really what I was interested in. It was, I wasn't interested in the theory or the history of Buddhism or Christianity. I was interested in what was it that, that Buddha discovered? What was it that Jesus knew? What was their lived experience? And so I catapulted myself out into the world just in pursuit of that question. What is enlightenment? What did Jesus realize? What, what is God? Who am I? What are we all? What are we doing here on this planet, living this crazy, beautiful, incredible life? And so I went through a, 
years and years of exploring different spiritual traditions. I was a practicing Buddhist for a long time. That's where I got the name Uma. My legal birth name is Catherine. People call me Katie, just like you. And um, that's still my name. People still call me Katie. My family mostly calls me Katie. Although because I go by Uma, they see it on Facebook. So then they end up calling me Uma because they get used to looking at it, you know. But anyway, um, ultimately, where I really ended up, the direction I ended up taking is that I met really powerfully grounded spiritual teachers. And one after another, I found my way to, well, also with just regular old therapy, also therapy, spiritual teachings and teachers, I found my way to a real place of self-reliance with it all. And I always thought when I was younger, if we really are God incarnate, which I picked up somewhere, like the, that's what we are. We're here, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And then in some way we're an aspect of God. And that's what makes us all one. I, I felt like if that was really the truth, then what did I need a religion for? Or what did I, any of us need a teacher for? If we were really devoted to finding that for ourselves, we would find it because that's what we're here for. And that's really what's been happening for me. I, I am devoted to my path. I'm devoted to awakening. And it's very practical, very, very, very practical. You know, I, there's like, I do read tarot cards, but they're practical. I don't, there's no woo. I'm not a witch. I, I'm just fine. I mean, I have nothing against all the woo, but that's really not my, I think it's very easy for us to get very distracted into thinking that we're, that enlightenment is some, some other state that we would attain and then not be of a body anymore. Or we also can get really distracted into thinking that, you know, a particular religious teaching is the one, the right one. And what I have really discovered is that all that that is mostly is a distraction and that ultimately awakening and enlightenment is about freedom. And what we're becoming free of is our preconceived ideas of who we are or how we're limited. And so, you know, therapy works really well for helping us unravel those beliefs and really we're trapped in fear and one of my great the last thing I'll say is just that one of my greatest teachings and teachers on this path is is a course in miracles and a course in miracles is very grounded in the truth that what we're really doing in our spiritual growth and awakening is removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence and there's only one block and that's fear and it takes gazillions of different forms. And we have to become very, very, very practiced and able to recognize fear in ourselves. And that's how we become free. And that's really what all my work is about is very practical ways. Like how, how do I become free and how do I help other people become free? And where are you afraid? Where are you afraid? Where are you afraid and not able to see it? Where do you have preconceived ideas and not able to see it? Where are you projecting your story onto yourself and everybody else? And how can I help you reframe that yeah yeah wow that's perfect that yes I totally I mean we have so much in common along those lines because you know I'm always saying there's either fear or there's love yeah you know totally and it's really true and we're not the only ones I mean that's what like great spiritual traditions and teachings say and it's true yeah yeah I guess I say it and you know sometimes in a little bit different way right I kind of came to that conclusion on my own. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. But yeah, but no, we definitely have a lot in common because I, I totally agree with um, if what you said about God being, you know, we are representations of God's inside of us and we're all one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and we're, and we are love, you know, so love to me is not an emotion. It's a way of being, it's a way of living. Yes, I agree completely. Yeah. And so that's, that's what we're meant to do here. What you were saying about um, be the best that we can be the best human expression of what we can be. And by, yeah. And to arrive at that is everything that you describe. Yeah. Yeah. I totally, I totally agree. That's, that's awesome. So I want to hear something first about um, like some of the programs that you do, what, what is, what's going on with that? 
Yeah, great. So my website, which is very simply the umaverse.com, you don't even need the www at the front. I mean, you don't really ever need that anymore because right. search the whatever technology knows, but everything is on there. The website is a work in progress. It's not at all where I want it to be, but it's still a pretty beautiful website that I'm very proud of. And I try to have everything on there currently that I'm focused on. So just by way of background, I want to say when I started the Umiverse, it really grew out of that I had all this accumulated wisdom and knowledge and skill, and I was trying to figure out how to provide it to people. How did I want to package it? And what was it really that I wanted to help people with? And so it's been a process of refining that and focusing that. And I feel that I have many, many years ahead of me of offering all kinds of things. And so at this point in time, I've decided to focus on women and to focus on really helping women live the life they long for. And the, what's underneath that for me is that I believe that we all have gifts to share and that very few of us are sharing them and that the world needs them. So one of my kind of taglines or slogans is the world needs your gifts. And we can't, we can't bring them if we don't know how. We can't bring them if fear is keeping us trapped in a life that's not in alignment with our soul's longing and the calling that we hear. So the main program that I've developed is called Live the Life You Long For. It's a three-month program. It's a group program. There's also a lot of individual interaction. It starts the next one. Basically, my vision with that is that it runs year-round from solstice to equinox and from equinox to solstice. However, it's always on a weekend day. So it doesn't, it doesn't start and finish exactly on the 21st or 22nd, but that's, that's the goal. So as close to possible as we roll through the seasons, that's how it runs. And it consists of um, multiple meetings, workshops, four workshops over the three months that are on, everything is on, currently on a Saturday or a Sunday. And East Coast time in around, usually starts around 11 or one. And the workshops are three to four hours and we cover very specific topics because as I've said, I'm very practical. So um, topics about how do you actually deal with your fear? How do you actually organize yourself to manifest? What are the inner, what's the inner work you have to do in order to manifest, but what's also the very practical outer work? How do you organize yourself? How do you organize your time? How do you plan a project? How do you plan a transition if you want to start your own business, for instance, and you're currently working a nine to five? How do you make that transition? Or So the women who've come to the program, oh, well, let me finish. So it's four workshops and then four integration circles. The workshops are four hours. The integration circles are one and a half hours. So it's every other weekend throughout that four month period. And then that those between those things, what you learn, and also a very important part of what happens in the program is the dynamic between the women who come. Because there's never any accidents, right? When we do these group programs, there's always this perfect, I'm sure you've, anyone listening probably can relate. You've been a student in a program or you've offered a program or any or a party, just the seeming random assortment of people who come are always, they always have some medicine for each other. They always have some secret important juice. And so one of the things I do is facilitate and create a very, very um, supportive and also well-organized environment so that everybody's not willy-nilly offering advice to each other. One of my guidelines that I hold to very strongly is no unasked for advice. But there is room for advice to be given and stories to be shared when people want it. And so in the groups, both the workshops and the integration circles, there's a lot of sharing and a lot of getting to see yourself reflected from other people. And then also everyone has support and accountability partnerships that rotate throughout the three months. So you get to be with a few different women. And that's really based on both your individual calling, who, you, who you'd like to connect up with once a week or however you want to, and also what I feel. Lots of times I have a sense like these, these two or three people ought to be connected for a few weeks. So it's a pretty potent and powerful program. There is a lot that happens. This particular incarnation is being recreated by me as we speak. I'm working on the curriculum right now. 
Um, it's an outgrowth of a program I've been running for a year called Creative Support Network. And I have women who've been in that since last September. And again, that was three months. And my vision now is that you would go through live the life you long for. And then if you love it and you want to continue on and sort of continue with the program, then you would go into the Creative Support Network. And they would both be running simultaneously. And Creative Support Network is for women who've been through the Live the Life You Long For program and they want to keep the connections. So the CSN, Creative Support Network, is less, um, it's much more responsive each, each session to what the women in the program are working on and needing. Mm -hmm. And as everyone gets to know each other, there's this very natural way that the, the CSN is growing and progressing. And Live the Life You Long For is going to be more really curriculum focused, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Whereas CSN is really more like an ongoing support network. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And it sounds fabulous. It's, <laughs> I, I, it I, is I, fabulous. I'm so, so many, <laughs> so many people that would benefit from that. What a gift you're, you're offering. Yeah, that was where it really came from, is that I was doing a lot of individual tarot readings at events locally here in Connecticut, where we both live. And before COVID started. And gosh, I mean, I had so many women coming to me. It was always almost like 90% of the women were like, I want to make a change and I don't know how, or I'm scared, or what should I do? Or I don't know, or this relationship isn't working. And sometimes it was relationships, but more than, than anything, I attract people who want to make changes in their, in their livelihood, who want their, what they're offering to the world to have more meaning. They want the way that they make money to be in alignment with their soul. And like I said, the gifts that they have to offer. And that's kind of my I'm realizing it's like, it's like a gift. It's my gift. It's like my superpower is that I can help you get in there there. And I'm very gentle in my approach and also very um, supportive and very positive. Like I, I see how people are able to grow and witnessing that is one of the greatest joys in my life. Like it makes me so happy when I see the women in my programs making changes and coming back and reporting back like this happened and that happened and I bought a house. I started the business. I got the job. I, I just had the conversation that I was afraid to have with my partner or my mother or my coworker or my boss, you know, because the coaching that I do is just responsive to whatever, like I said, whatever, whatever people need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell that it really brings you joy because it just, it's actually you up just talking about it. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so I can imagine how, when it's really happening. Yeah. So I'm sure you get a you know, fabulous response from everybody that, um, that takes the class yeah. for us. And, and, and you know what else, having that ongoing support at work, I, I don't know, it seems a little bit unique. I, I don't know, maybe I just haven't come across it in, in any of the things that I've seen, but that to me is like so um, you know, important because it, it like keeps you, keeps you going. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I have it is because the women who wanted to, keep, you know, the women want to keep going. And that's when I realized, oh, and they didn't want to go back into the intro program. They wanted to stay with each other. And they were like, it would be fine if other women join us as they come through the program. I've talked to the women about it. They're like, no, that would be great to have it grow. But they just don't want me. They don't want to kind of have to sit through the basics again, which makes total sense. Like manifestation advanced, you know, like take manifestation and not just manifestation, but manifestation and healing or whatever you want to call it. 101. That's the live the life you long for program. And then go into the ongoing advanced living the, the actual now you're actually living the life you long for let's let's do it together and my vision is that this gets really big and that I have books and I have organizations and that ultimately though that people are still receiving the same level somehow I don't know how that magic is going to happen but that even as I grow and as the universe grows people will still benefit at that same level and I do believe it's really possible because I'm not the only one as I share it other people share it you know, and then the ripple and, you know, it's like create the life we long for, right? Create the world we long for, not just right. the life we long for. Right, that extension. And, you know, that's interesting because I was just going to ask you that question, like the, the women that have taken it, have any of them gone on to either be coaches or do something 
want not it. yet not yet but um yeah i i see that it's potential because that hasn't been their calling the women who've been in the program so far none of them have had that calling that they really want to go on and do it but i have secret little plans that they don't know about <laughs> you know, to maybe invite them to, to, to come to the, the Live the Life You Long For program, to maybe be a teaching assistant or whatever you would call it. Teaching assistant's not exactly the right word, but I have a background in academia. So teaching assistant and graduate assistant are words, phrases that still are stuck <laughs> in my mind from decades ago. Um, but yeah, um, I'd love that. And, and, and that it becomes, you know, a, a community sharing. I, I, what I do see very much is that the women who come into anything I do, whether it's a one-off workshop or class, because I have those two, you can see it on the website, or the longer programs, they adopt the guidelines immediately. The guidelines of no one asks for advice. We're all here. Everything that's said is for each of us. When one woman is sharing, we are all focused on that woman sending her healing in whatever way is natural for us. And also that knowing that whatever is being offered to any individual is being offered to each of us, they adopt that really quickly. Mm -hmm. And then everything that they're in moving forward has such a different tenor because each of the women is holding that space. We're all holding it together. So the energy in the, in, and it's all over Zoom. We do it all over Zoom. So if you don't, like you said about your work in the intro, how it doesn't matter if you're in person or in Zoom. I, oh, I feel that so potently. Like even now with you, like I feel you. It doesn't yeah. matter that we're not sitting. And I even feel everyone who's watching this, who is, doesn't even watching it yet when we're uh -huh. talking, like I can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And I we all can. You. So. Yeah. Yeah, and also, you know, even if the women don't um, initially or right away go into specific work like like we do, just by the change that they're making in themselves, the world around them, their colleagues, their family, their friends is going to start to change, right? Totally. Absolutely. And I see that and I hear that. Like one of the women has two young sons and she's just been, been through a rough divorce and even since she joined in January, she reports so, such a different, the way she's relating to her ex, their, the way she's relating to the kids, the way she feels like the kids are able to navigate it. She's just able to hold such a different space for them, she tells me. So, which wasn't even an intention. You know, it's just like a quote unquote side effect. Right, but it does, it happens naturally. I mean, I know from my own experience, you know, when I started to um, shift and, let go of some of my, you know, limiting beliefs and just uh, seeing things differently, right? Yeah. That everybody around me started to also take on some of those. Um, it does. Yeah. And I, one of the things I learned from one of my teachers, she used to say at the end of retreats, and I always say it is, or I try to remember is don't, you, you don't have to explain what you're going, what you're realizing to anybody. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to convince anybody. You don't even have to talk to people about it. You will change and they will see it. Right, exactly. You know, and maybe or maybe or maybe not, they might ask you about it, but it doesn't matter. I, I yeah, yeah. 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 It's just by by being who you are. You know, I think we're all, you know, changing the world just, you know, by being by being who we are. I believe that because I believe I believe that we create the world. The entire world really. We create this world that we live in. We create our society. We create our government. We create our economics. We create it all. And by all of us collectively evolving and changing, that's how society will evolve and change or yeah. not. Right. Well, we all create our own reality. Definitely. You know, and that's that's what I tell people all the time. If, if, you, if you choose to feel upset, you know, that's your choice. But there is also a choice not to be upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't wanna, I agree with that and I say that all the time, especially when it comes to being upset and angry about what you see going on in the world. The one thing I also feel, and I'm sure you would agree, is that there are people, including myself, who have chemical imbalances that require, that, you know, that will be depressed regardless of the work. And that things like, you know, real depression, it's okay to feel like, you don't have to feel like you have to change. Like you, there are some things that you need a little bit of help and that's okay. Oh, of course. You know, like, I feel like, I always feel like I want to say that at the no, same time. 
That's because we, it can be easy for us to feel so bad, like it's our, everything that happens is our fault or everything we feel is like getting into the fault thing. And I just feel like, just let it go. Like, right, yeah, right. make your choices to feel good. And if you still need help to not be super depressed and see a doctor. Right, right. And then there's, there's methods to, to, to deal with that. Absolutely. It's not... It's not a one size fits all, you know? Yeah. All, none of, I mean, we're all one, but we're all unique. Yes. Oh, Katie, I so agree. I so agree. Yeah. yeah and, and appreciate and celebrate the, those differences. You know, I, I love, you know, meeting new people and just um, finding out about them and also just immediately, you know, just seeing the good in them. And, and that's what I, that's pretty much all I see, you know? That's so good. Did you have to work at that to learn how to do it? Well, you know, I didn't work at it. It just came with all of the personal growth, I think, and yeah. just coming from love and, and sharing that side of me, just coming from that place instead of where I used to come from. I don't even, I can't even remember. That. Yeah, yeah, I know. Me too. I know exactly what you mean. I still have my moments, but you know, where I'll get, I get irritated or I got mad at somebody or I kind of, you know, I still lose my temper a little bit, but it's so easy now for me to just be like, wait, wait a sec. This is not in alignment with how I actually want to feel. And everyone deserves compassion and kindness and the, the benefit of the doubt and also the deeper recognition that no matter what we're all doing, it, if we're doing like hurtful things or annoying things or whatever you want to say from my perspective, it's, it's, it's because we're not, they're not connected to love. Whenever anything isn't going smoothly, it's because we're not connected to love. I'm not connected to love. They're not connected to love. And the cool thing seems like, and I think this is kind of what you're saying, like only one of us needs to really reconnect to love. And then the whole dynamic shifts. Yeah, I, I think so. And and also, you know, what has been really helpful for me is one of the, the four agreements, you know, that yeah. Miguel did. And the second one, which is don't take anything personally. Yeah. Because I look at it when somebody is annoying me or, you know, making me upset, it's really, it's, it's, it's not about me. So they're not making me upset. They're triggering something in me that's making myself get upset. You yes, know? I'm making yeah. me get upset. <laughs> Or not, I'm making me, but I'm having that reaction. Right, right. And so you have a choice and, and knowing that whatever they're saying that might, um, you might look at it, well, they're, they're being hurtful or they're being mean or something like that. Well, it's because of something inside of them that may be wounded or hurt or yeah, um, not, not aligned. So I just look at it that way and it really is helpful. Yeah, and I'm so glad you brought that up, Katie, because I feel like that is really, that's the work. Of spiritual awakening it's not just about getting along it, that work isn't only to get along with people better that work is actually awakening that work is how you find love is by discovering that doing that kind of process for ourselves with everything so that's why i think that don't take it personally in the four agreements or any way you want to fit it into your life is so important and i feel like in the last couple of years, I have been just accelerating at a great, at a really fast pace that surprises myself sometimes at how quickly I'm able to drop something to, and not take it personally. Mm -hmm. not yeah. yeah. The, no. better, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Like anything. It's like, it's like that with spiritual practices or spiritual awakening techniques or whatever you want, tools of, you know, it's like the more you use it, the better you get. The more you use the muscle, the better you get. The more you use, the more you meditate, the better you get at meditating. All right. Well, I, we're going to have to sign off. Okay. <laughs> it's so much fun talking to you. I really, really appreciate it. It was great. And, um, and we'll be in touch. And thank, thank you. Uma Bodhi. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Love you too, Katie. Bye. Bye.